Hey, what is up you guys? Today I'm going to be going over some Xcode basics and Swift basics. Um, even though you don't need to know how to code to do reskins, it can be really helpful to know the basic layout of Xcode and uh, some simple programming techniques, or at least variables and stuff. <laughs> um, anyway, let's get into the video. So first, to be able to do this, you'll need either a Mac or a Windows machine running uh, Mac OS, a virtual machine. Um, if you have a Windows computer and you want to run Mac OS, uh, there's some great tutorials on virtual machines. You can just search virtual machines um, for Windows with Mac OS um, into Google, and there will be a lot of great results. There's probably some good uh, YouTube videos. So just take a look at those, follow the instructions, download Mac OS and uh, get it on your Windows computer before you start this. So assuming you have a Mac computer or Windows running Mac OS, you can just go to the App Store right here and download uh, Xcode. It's totally free. It just takes a little while to download because it's a big file. So now that we have all the basics finished, let's open up Xcode. All right, so we're gonna create a new project right here. These are just some things that I've created. I always, I almost always do a single view app as the basis for my app. Um, you can do a sticker pack app, which is like an emoji kind of app. iMessage app is a little bit more of an advanced version of that where you can customize the view. Then there's some like tabbed apps, which is uh, a little tab bar at the bottom of the app or a navigation controller. I typically always just go with this because you can turn this into anything. There's no like uh, restrictions. So let's just go with that. We'll just call this test YouTube project. The team is the account that you use to open up Xcode. Organization name can be anything. Organization identifier is usually just like a reverse domain name. So I just put my last name in com.app or usually I just do com.chong, but that's okay. For language, you're gonna wanna do Swift because that's the newest. And let's just choose where, you can choose where you wanna save it. I have my development folder. All right, so here we are. So the basics here are the bundle identifier. This is very important for when you're uploading the app. Every app has to have a unique one. Um, once you have it here, you probably don't wanna change it. This is the name that will show up on the iPhone. So right now the default is just the name of my project, but I could just make it something shorter, like test app, and it'll show up. This is the version, the build. You can change those to whatever you like. The team is here. And then this is the, like the, lowest version that your app will be able to run on. And this decides whether it's a universal app or only run on iPad or iPhone. So those are the basics. You can get to the app icon here. I have a video on creating app icons if you're interested in that type of thing. And this is whether the phone will support portrait, which is just standing up or landscape. I normally only allow portrait. Uh, that's a lot easier to create than having it adapt to landscape, and it's not really necessary to do that. So I think the coolest part of Xcode is the storyboard uh, function. This is how you can lay out the whole view without doing any code at all. This is like what the view will look like as soon as you get into the app. This just shows this is the first screen that is shown. So there's a ton of cool things you can add into here. You can just put in like buttons. You can resize everything. All of this can be done without any code at all. You can make this say go. You can change the color, change the color of the background of the button. You can change the font to something a little more interesting. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. What else? There's like labels. 
there's uh, you can add more view controllers so you can have a different flow for the app. Table views so you can scroll through data. Collection views also do the same thing. You can add a tab bar to the bottom. Uh, labels and buttons like, like I showed. Here's some special buttons. Text fields to put in information. Sliders like the volume control. Switches. Different loading views. Page views. Steppers. So there's a ton of stuff that you can put into here and make any type of app. So it's pretty cool to look through this. There's a lot of possibilities. I won't go through everything. The basics are just like buttons and labels and text fields and maybe some like nav bars or tab bars. Besides that, you usually don't need too much for a basic app. So then another important thing is if you press this button right here, the identity inspector. This is going to show the class for this specific view. So this says view controller right now, which means it is connected to this view right here. So you can change that. If you create a different file, like let's say I create a new view controller file, call it another view controller. Just stay with like the default settings. So here it is. This is the code for that view controller. And then I can go back to the storyboard, look at this identity inspector, and there you go, another view controller shows up. So I can now make that view controller control this. So another important file is just the app delegate. This kind of does the initial launch kind of stuff for your app. You usually don't have to add too much to this besides some initial configuration right in the did finish launch with options function. Um, like for Firebase, you have to add some stuff in Stripe and PayPal. So usually you don't have to do too much advanced stuff in here for basic apps. So let's take a look at the storyboard again. Let's say we want to do something here. It's really cool because you can make UI elements do stuff really without too much code at all. So let's say we want something to happen when this button is pressed. You're going to right click it and then drag it over here. And instead of outlet, you press create action. And I can name this action so I can say go press. Touch up inside means the button was pressed. There's also like a ton of stuff, but you usually don't need to use those. So you can press connect. And this is the function that will be run when this button is pressed. So as soon as anybody presses that button, all the stuff inside this little block here is going to get executed. So now that that's connected, just open up a full view. Awesome. So we can do something basic. Um, I'll do this in kind of a weird way just to show you guys some different parts of Swift, like how to create variables and everything. So let's do that. So to create a variable in Swift, it's very easy. You just say var, put the name of the variable. Let's just call it welcome text. Then you can put in equals to assign what it is. So for this, I want it to be a string. So you put some double quotes. I can just say welcome to my app and then close it up. So now we've created a string. You can also create numbers. So a var can really be any type that you assign it to. You don't have to specify like in some other languages, like say it's a string or an int or a double. You can just say var, whatever you want to call it, and then assign it to something. So that makes it a lot simpler. So let's just say we want to print something to this right here is the console log. So print will just make some text show up there. Anyways, I can just say print and then put in welcome text. And then when they press this button, um, it'll print welcome to my app to the log down there. So you can also print numbers too. You don't need to like change anything. 
I can just say print welcome num and it'll print the welcome text and the number 12. So these warnings here are just telling me these are never changed. So instead of having a variable, you can have something called a constant, which you declare with let. And that means this information can never be changed once you initialize it. So once you set this to welcome to my app, you can never change it again. You can only read it. Same as with welcome num. So like if I say, let's say I try to assign welcome num to 25, there should be an error that comes up that tells me you cannot do that because it's a constant. So it says, change that to a variable, which it did, but it's not going away. There you go. So now that it's a variable, you can change it again. So now this will print welcome text, which is welcome to my app, and then welcome num, which will be 25, since we reset it to 25 after setting it to 12. So those are variables and uh, constants. Uh, pretty simple. This is a function here, this entire thing right here. Functions in Swift are indicated with some brackets, curly braces, whatever you want to call them. Um, and they start with func, like that. You can declare your own function by just saying func go was pressed. And then you have to put two um, little things there, two parentheses, I forgot for a second. Um, and then this is a function. I can just make it say print go was pressed. Same as up here, except you can put directly a string in here. You don't have to have a variable. And now I can have this call go was pressed by just typing that. So now when go is pressed, it'll also call this function and it'll execute this. So it'll say, welcome to my app, 25, and then go was pressed. So those are some basics of Xcode. There's a ton of more stuff you can learn, of course, with programming. This is just very basic stuff. Another important thing is the view did load function. Every view controller has this, and this is executed as soon as the view loads. So as soon as it shows up on your um, phone or loads it, uh, all the code in there will be executed. So if I wanted to say, um, the view was loaded. As soon as the view loads, it'll print this. This will only happen when someone presses the button that we created. So those are the differences there. So those are some basics. This video is already at like 13 minutes, so I'm probably not going to go through more. But I'm kind of hoping to make some more Xcode and Swift videos because I think programming is really helpful, even with reskinning. So it can be a useful thing to learn. And it's pretty cool too, when you see all the amazing things you can create, all the apps that were created from scratch by one person uh, just with this code. So it's pretty awesome. Anyway, I'm going to end this video here. Be sure to check out my free Amazon ebook about reskinning Amazon apps. And also check out my course that we'll be releasing in maybe around a month. Uh, Pre-orders are open and you can get it on a $50 discount. So act now if you want to get that. Otherwise the price will go up once it releases. So thanks for watching this one guys. And I hope I could teach you some simple Xcode and Swift basics. I know it wasn't that much, but I'll be releasing more advanced videos in the future. Thanks guys.